Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another Old School RuneScape video. In the previous one, we looked at the melee gear progression, and today we will do the same for ranged. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more guides like these. But before we start, just like the previous video, I have a few disclaimers, which are very important to disclose to give the video more context. As you can see, there's a lot of them, so I'll mention them really quickly in order to avoid dragging them for too long. Number one, all the prices you see in this video are subject to change since the market is always fluctuating. Number two, I will assume you have a base of 40 stats to begin with, and we will build up from there. Number three, this video is mostly aimed towards unrestricted accounts who can use the Grand Exchange, but Iron Man could still benefit from these tips. Number four, I will assume you have average wealth and that you are not either super rich or super poor, so all the upgrades you see here will be fairly budget friendly until we get to the late game. Number five, I won't include the Slayer helmet in this video since we are looking at strictly DPS outside Slayer, but you should always wear one when training the skill. Number six, none of the upgrades you see here are mandatory and you can follow them and do your own path, but they are still fairly standard in terms of DPS and defensive stats. Finally, number seven, I will not cover niche gear such as Void or Crystal Armor, since they are not exactly useful in every single instance. They could be useful, but they are not best in slot, so I will not cover them in detail. And as a final disclaimer, as most of you know, the range to rebalance update will hit the game quite soon. According to Jagex, the ranged meta looks like this at the time of recording this video. Twisted Bow against high magic targets with low defense, Dragon Hunter Crossbow against dragons, and the Blowpipe for pretty much everything else. After the changes, out of which some will be unpolled and with the addition of the new bow, Jagex plans for the meta to look like this. Twisted Bow against high magic targets, Dragon Hunter Crossbow against dragons, Armadil Crossbow against mid to high defense targets with enough HP for the Ruby Bolts to proc, the new bow against the mid to high defense targets with not a lot of HP, and finally the blowpipe specifically for low defense targets or everything else. As a general rule of thumb, remember that the first four items have niche uses. The Tebow for some bosses and Brutal Black Dragons, Dragon Hunter Crossbow for Dragons, Crossbows with Ruby Bolts for enemies with a ton of HP, and the new bow against the targets with mid to high defense. However, for things such as Slayer and the quick DPS with the best darts you can afford, it seems like the Blowpipe will remain the overall best choice in a lot of situations. So even after the rebalance update, this video will most likely be pretty relevant, especially because it looks like the new bow will be for later game players and the build path up to that point remains untouched. Whenever you see this icon on screen, it means that it would be a good idea to buy the new bow and if possible maybe use it with crystal armor. But at this point there's no image, price or any additional information other than its stats to provide for the video. Also keep in mind that wherever the new bow is useful, it would be a good idea to wear crystal armor, but again it seems like it's going to be pretty niche so I won't talk about them in greater detail. In any case, after the rebalance update hits the live game, come back to this video and check the pinned comment for more information to keep updated on the meta. So, with this PhD thesis out of the way, let's begin. As you can see, the base gear is looking pretty sad, and this is what you should have heading into your first experience as a member. We only have a few key upgrades once we have access to members' items, and these are the snakeskin bandana, snakeskin boots, and an amulet of glory for higher ranged accuracy. I then recommend you get a level 50 ranged and do the animal magnetism quest to get the Avas accumulator which will save you a ton of time in the long run as you won't need to pick up your ammo once fired. Other than that, it's uh, pretty much the second best in slot item for the cape slot. Now that we are level 50 ranged, you can get to the grand exchange and upgrade your green dragon hide into blue dragon hide and most importantly buy a magic short bow with rune arrows. You can potentially buy a magic short bow scroll for 200k to empower your weapon, but honestly it's not that worth it especially since you won't be using it for long and you will get levels pretty quickly. If you don't have the Fremenic Trials done at this point, do it and get level 45 defense to unlock the archer helm and upgrade that ugly looking snakeskin bandana. The upgrades continue to be fairly standard as we are going to aim for level 60 ranged and upgrade that blue dragon hide into red dragon hide for even better DPS and defensive stats. Our next upgrade is only one level away and I recommend getting a rune crossbow and a book of law with a completion of horror from the deep. As for the ammo, broad bolts are super cheap and yield a pretty good DPS output, but you could opt into diamond bolts enchanted if you are fighting enemies with higher defense 
or Ruby Bolts Enchanted if the target has a ton of HP. But for the sake of this video, stick to Broad Bolts since it's pretty standard to use them for Slayer and other normal combat things. If you have enough money, you could upgrade your Rune Crossbow at level 64 ranged and buy a Dragon Crossbow for 860k. You could also potentially buy Dragon Bolts for even more damage, but keep in mind that these are way more expensive than Broad Bolts. Continue training ranged, and at level 70 you are going to buy full Black Dragon Hide armor, since it's incredibly cheap for the stats it provides. Now, this is where the expensive upgrades start, and you can buy all of these in order to increase your DPS. We will go for an Archer's Ring, an Amulet of Fury, and God D Hide Boots. Just like before, if you can't afford all of these items in one go, that's the order in which I recommend buying them. At this point, your account is more than ready to complete the recipe for disaster for the Barrow's Gloves, which are actually best in slots. Now, the reason why I didn't include these earlier on the list is because the Black Dragonhide Van Braces are very close in terms of stats, and it wasn't exactly crucial to get these. But now we have the best in slot pair of gloves. This is where we get into our first multiple choice upgrade. By getting level 70 defense, you unlock Carol's armor, and at this point, God Dragonhide armor is also available to you. I won't suggest the body and the chaps since they have the same ranged attack bonus as Black Dragonhide. All you need to know is that God Dragonhide will give you one prayer bonus per piece, and Carol only has higher ranged and magic defense compared to Black Dragonhide, but it has lower melee defensive stats. So it pretty much depends on what you are fighting. For the purpose of this video, I will continue suggesting Black Dragonhide armor, and Carol has other niche uses for both ranged and melee. But the one Carol piece I will recommend is the Coif, as it is a direct upgrade for your head slot. Just to remember that you will have to repair it every now and then. Also, an honorable mention to the Robin Hood hat, since it has one more ranged bonus than the Carol's Coif, but it's way more expensive, and the benefit, it's not that noticeable. You are then going to train ranged up to level 75 for the staple blowpipe, and now you can wear a blessing on your ammo slot. Just remember, you will need to charge the blowpipe with scales and darts, but it's really not that expensive. And speaking of expensive, this is where the expensive upgrades are going to begin, and we will start by leveling prayer up to level 74 and buying a dexterous prayer scroll to unlock the rigor prayer for a ridiculous increase in DPS. And on the topic of ridiculous increase in DPS, if you do not yet have level 75 HP, train a little more to buy an Amulet of Anguish for the best-in-slot neck item. At this point, it will be a pretty good idea to camp Nightmare Zone to earn enough points for an Archer Ring to imbue and double its ranged offensive stat. With all of these upgrades, you should be more than prepared for Dragon Slayer 2. When you finish the quest, kill Vorkath up to 50 times, get its head, give it to Ava, and unlock the Ava's Assembler for the best ranged cape slot in the game. We come to a pretty expensive upgrade, and it is now time to buy the Armadale Armor. If you don't have enough money for all three pieces, I recommend getting them in the order showed on screen. To round up the upgrades, you are going to get level 75 defense and finally purchase a pair of Pegasian boots. Now, the final upgrade would be a twisted bow with dragon arrows, but at a price of almost 1 billion GP, this may not be accessible to every single player, but don't worry as this is pretty much a niche item on its own. It's only good for the Inferno, the Theater of Blood, Chambers of Zarek, and only a few more places, so don't worry too much about this item and stick to the blowpipe to earn enough money for this upgrade in the future. Speaking of which, if you stick to the blowpipe, the final upgrade would be getting a Rodus Blessing 4, which can be obtained by completing the Elite Karen Diary. And for a few honorable mentions, we have the Dragon Hunter Crossbow, which is good against dragons, and the Armadil Crossbow, which is only slightly better than the Dragon Crossbow, but it's way more expensive. If using a crossbow, you could also get a dragon fire ward to protect against the dragon fire, and a twisted buckler for anything else that requires a crossbow. Technically, you can buy ranger boots at level 1, but at a price of around 31 million GP, you can spend your money on better things early on. The crystal bow could also be a decent item to train with, but recharging it could be a little annoying and expensive. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something new. If you disagree with anything I said, make sure to leave a comment below and we can discuss about it. In the next video, we are going to take a look at magic gear, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.